Hey, what's going on everybody? Brian here. Uh, I get asked a lot about the gear that I carry uh, while I truck camp. So I'm going to show you guys real quick the gear that's up front here, the gear that's on the front and in front of the uh, storage bins that I have underneath here. And then I'll pull out my storage bin that has the gear in it and show you, we'll do a close-up shot of that, show you what I carry there. But uh, I prefer the minimalist setup for truck camping. I don't think that carrying a lot of gear adds to the experience. I think it takes away from the experience because if you're spending all of your time trying to find where gear's at or trying to reorganize stuff or just if you got too much stuff and it's just cluttery you know you're not gonna be able to to truly enjoy being out in nature and having this experience because you're just gonna spend all your time fiddling with your stuff so you know pair all your things down i've done probably i think now so i've gone through like six downsizes since i've been on the road and but well, my general rule of thumb is if i don't have two uses for a item then i get rid of it because uh, you know, I was carrying all these luxury items <clears throat> when I first hit the road and it was just cumbersome because I'd, I'd get to camp and it'd take me 20 minutes to get everything out of here and it'd all be, it'd be like, you know, either in the cab of my truck, I'd relocate it up there for the evening so my camp didn't look messy or if I'd, I'd put up a tent and then put all the stuff in there and it was just a pain. So I think just um, everybody is a creature of convenience and I believe that when you hit the road, it makes you become a minimalist out of convenience. That way, you don't carry a bunch of stuff with you that isn't needed. That just tends to complicate your life. So, um, let's go in real quick. I'll just show you when I roll up to camp, you know, and I drop the tailgate, this is what I see. What I always have available first are my, see that, that axe there? It's crazy. Um, no, what, what I what I make sure I always have available when I come to camp first are my cutting tools for wood, so that way I can get a fire going. So I'll have my machete, and then also my outdoorsman axe. I do the majority of my cutting with the outdoorsman axe because I'll get larger pieces of wood and just start processing them down to smaller and smaller pieces. And then I do also use a 14-inch east wing hatchet, but I've just found lately that I pretty much just use that for the hammer portion on the backside to secure an awning to the ground or you know stuff like that i don't really use them much anymore for processing wood i use the the big axe here it's really really convenient to use because the head is super heavy so you can take it and you can you can just use it and just pinpoint and shave pieces of wood off to make small kindling and then chop into bigger pieces for bigger kindling stuff like that and you can pretty much do everything you need with this and they're really sharp uh mine needs to be resharpened a little bit because i've hit a few rocks with it <clears throat> but they're still rock solid. This is a Gerber and it's called the Outdoorsman Axe. I think they're like 50 bucks. Definitely worth it. Machetes are great. I like it because uh, one of the main features of a machete that's really convenient is the metal is flexible. So if you're like chopping into something and you want to pop things out, you know, you can do that. And you're not going to compromise the blade. You're not going to break the blade. So that's the biggest benefit to the machete. Also too, I like the saw on this side. Really great for, for clearing brush or you know if you got a saw through like a small limb or something like that really useful great for backpacking tons of uses and also too it's gnarly for uh, for self-defense so you, know, you can become a ninja master with these machetes and nobody will mess with you anyway uh, so let's go ahead so like I said I roll it to camp um, this is what I see and we're gonna start with the top and then we'll clear out the bottom and then I'll show you what's in the bins so uh, I've got this little bungee cord that I use to secure things up against this side of the truck so it doesn't slide over into my sleeping area. So, i uh, got my pack towel here, just throw to the side. My yoga mat, which I usually put on the tailgate here, makes it real nice and comfy. And then I've got my Thermaz Z seat. This thing's really awesome. You can put this on gnarly rocks and sit on them and it's really comfortable. So I recommend this. Uh, it's great because it's just boom, you got yourself an extra seat. If you got somebody that's visiting, you know, you can put that on a rock and have them have a seat. Or you take a backpack in or hike in, it's really great to use. So that's nice to have. And then I've got my large kettle pot. I use this to boil water when I get to camp. And also, like, if I'm uh, camping near a stream that seems like it's relatively clean, then what I'll do is I'll, I'll do a cloth filter over the water to get any particles out. And then I'll boil the water. And then I've got some pure water, and I'll throw it in my road shower on my roof rack and just fill up that reservoir. Because I don't really use the road chair that much to shower. I use, I go to the gym quite often. And so um, I've just found that the road shower is a great reservoir for backup water. Also, it's a great way to wash my dog off if she gets into some really dirty mud when we're in the backcountry. And then also it's great for cleaning 
and gear and also doing dishes. So uh, I love that fact of it. It's great having pressurized water on demand. Uh, and in the event that I'm not going back into town or if I'm out in backcountry for quite some time, you know, I can always use it to shower up. So it's great. But uh, so I carry this uh, inside it. I always keep my camp suds. A little concoction that I do is I put a little bit of camp suds in here, like about that much. And then I fill the rest up with water and then you can shake it up and then you have like a soapy sudsy water to wash hands with and do stuff. That way you don't have to get out the concentrate. I've always found with a concentrate, I end up like trying to put just a little bit and it's like, uh, and then you have like a quarter size in there, which is enough to clean like probably all the clothes that you carry. So you just don't need to use that much. So doing that's nice because then it's, it's, it's you, you got soapy water on demand, you just shake it up, you're good to go and uh, you can clean your hands. Um, I also have bear spray, I carry that. Uh, I've got a couple different places in my truck that I carry it just for self-defense purposes and also for bears and stuff like that. And then uh, now we're getting into taking out the guts of everything. So I, I carry a little fan in the summertime. It's just got four rechargeable uh, AA batteries and I've got a recharger over here that's hooked up to my inverter. So let's see, oh, it's right there. So right now what I've got hooked up is the four batteries for this and then the Canon battery for my camera. So that charges when I drive and I drive quite often. So it's sufficient for now, but when I get my refrigerator and put it in the back seat, a little small one, uh, I'm gonna need to get a secondary battery system and get that all set up. So I'll do that in a later video when I get that all squared away. But what I'll do is I'll take this and it's got a nice clamp on it. And so you can put that on one of the sides with the sliding window, open up the window and you get fresh air in all night. It just it's just nice to have it's uh, uh especially on the evenings when it's real nice or, or when it's really warm we've had some warm ones lately around here uh, it's nice to be cooled off like this and then usually about the middle of the night you know you wake up and you're a little chilly and then you can just turn it off good to have so i recommend that and then i've got my reliance aquatainer this is a six and a half gallon i'm sorry six gallon water container these things are bulletproof man you can like literally toss them off a cliff and they will not break so I'm real impressed with this product. I recommend it for everybody who's gonna go out and camp. Uh, it's good to have all this water. Um, the spout works real great and it's really durable. The only thing is on the back here with the little um, air control valve for, for letting air in so you can get more water out is that it, it, it always comes loose. Like it's got a little plastic piece that holds this on here, but it breaks off and it's a small plastic piece. So what can you expect? So just got to keep an eye on this. If you get rid of this and this falls off and you lose it, then if the water's full, if you're jostling around in the back here and four-wheeling like crazy, water's going to come out and get all over your stuff. So just a heads up, I learned that by experience. You don't want to do that. So put that down there. And I'm still borrowing a cooler from a friend. Uh, my friends Kimmy and Joe Randall here in BV. They let me borrow their cooler because somebody stole my Yeti. And I was going to get that secondary battery system and, and get it all set up, but everything's on back order like three or four months. So I've been kind of lagging on my decision, but I'll probably get another Yeti Roadie 35 liter cooler. That, that thing's awesome. I mean, I know people talk smack about Yetis like, oh, they're expensive and all that stuff. But what's a couple hundred bucks for like a cooler that keeps ice 10 to 12 days? Uh, you know, it's to me, it's worth it. They're they're great, um, and there's a reason why there's a bunch of the knockoff brands. It's because it's a good good product. So, I mean, if you want to save money and go with the knockoff brands, they're made in overseas. Uh, the Yeti Roadie is actually made here in the United States, so I just prefer to buy that. Yeah, it's about 100 bucks more than the RT's IC, but uh, I think it's worth it. So, anyway, that's what I'm probably gonna do is get the Yeti eventually. I just need to get off my butt and go buy it. So we cleared that out. I'll take this uh, bungee and I'll put it back up over here. Then I'll take my bear spray, put it back up. So that way it's always right there and I know exactly where it's at. If I need to grab it in here and grab the bear spray for any sort of self-defense, I'm good to go. Uh, moving on down here, I've always got my fly fishing stuff set up. I have like to fly fish, but I pretty much fly fish every day. And so uh, I've got my fly rod, which is the Tinkara rod. Uh, just did a video about that, so if you want to check that one out. Uh, it's a fly fishing rod that weighs 21 ounces. Got my Sims boots. Got my waders. So those are all, I can quick grab those and rock and roll. Then I've got my little pouch that has all my fly fishing gear in here with my flies and different fixed lines and stuff like that for the Tinkara rod. Okay, now getting into the, the, the guts of everything here, I've got a little hand uh, broom that I use to keep everything clean. This thing works awesome. They, they call them like tent, uh, tent brooms, I think is what it is. And it comes with a little uh, 
case for it that actually is like a fold out dustpan. Uh, that broke a while back because they're made out of plastic and plastic stuff just isn't that durable for me. But the you know hand broom still works fine. So I use that to keep everything clean. It just helps. I mean, if you keep your hands clean and to try to keep all your surfaces clean, chances are you're not going to get your gear too dirty. Uh, one of the mistakes that I made when I hit the road full time is my hands would always be dirty, and then I'm like, man, my gear is always trash. And same with my clothes, they're always dirty. You know, it's because my hands were dirty. And so everything I touched, which was everything in my vehicle, and also all my gear, it all just got real dirty. And so I'd recommend just stay on top of your personal hygiene, keep your hands clean, keep your vehicle clean, and try, and it'll just in turn keep your gear clean and also your clothes. So just a little uh, advice. So these are handy. Um, I've got this awesome tool that I bought. I've uh, got this in Swatch, Colorado. I went to a state sale and there was a guy who was selling this. It's a um, Vietnam era shovel and also a pick. So you can do like that. You can do a pick or you can do it sideways. And I love this because that makes a little seat for me. So I'll put that Thermarest Z seat on here and I'll sit down and it's actually the perfect height for me to type on my tailgate. So it's like a little little workbench for me. So it's really durable. I love this thing. Um, it's pretty cool. Check it out. 1964. So this thing's been around a while. And to think that the uh, other tool, and I won't, I won't say who the manufacturer is, but the other tool that I had was that was like this, but was modern made, uh, busted after a year. So this one's been around since 64 and I think it's gonna be around for quite a bit longer. I just like old stuff and I think this is pretty neat. So I um, recommend having a shovel with you. Um, if it's a, even just a little hand shovel, it's great for digging cat holes. That's the biggest thing that I see when I'm doing trail maintenance is people don't dig cat holes and there's toilet paper everywhere. Uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that if you dig a cat hole six inches deep uh, and even if you put your toilet paper in there after you use the restroom, the toilet paper and everything will be gone within four months because the microbes in the ground eat it. And so that's a great way to leave no trace when you're out camping. Just whatever you do, don't leave toilet paper just sitting on top of the ground because the animals come and eat it. And then it's, it's also a way that disease is spread in the backcountry. So it's just, uh, just avoid it. You know, don't put it under a rock either because it doesn't do anything. I mean, you know, either bury it or pack it out. Those are the only two options you have. So, all right, back to my stuff here. Um, got just some miscellaneous camping or cooking items that are inside my bear vault. This is what I use if I backpack. So uh, just it keeps food safe and then you can put it up and tie it up to like a, on a branch up in a tree that way the bears don't get to it uh, I've got my tent this is a uh, REI passage 2 it's really old I mean it's it's really on its last legs I'm about ready to get a new tent and I'm deciding on whether I want to go with like a big Agnes ultralight tent or if I want to do like a tarp tent setup because I saw Hyperlite has this really great uh, tarp tent setup that has an interior mesh uh, insert that actually has a floor on it so that way you know bugs won't get in or if it's raining you know you don't get wet and the whole setup with everything weighs 1.87 pounds so that's that's pretty awesome that tent weighs five pounds and it's just uh it's one i got a long time ago it works great but uh, i typically only set that up if i get to a campsite and i want to reserve it and then run back into town um, I'll do that. I'll set that up or if I want to have an area just to store stuff if I'm at camp for a long time But generally I just don't really use it. It's just I just have it just in case Okay One of the last items I have here is my Roll-up table That I got at REI uh, I forget which brand this is I took the label off so I can't remember but Anyway, all your poles are inside here and then the way it is on the back, you just uh, insert the, the poles and then screw them in. And it creates a real good table. I think it can hold up to like 110 pounds. So I'm not, I'm not really tested that, but it seems pretty stable to me. And it's nice because it rolls up and it's real compact. Uh, but honestly, during the summer, I don't really use it that much because I just use my tailgate because it's so nice. If the weather's real bad, then I'll drop the awning and, uh, and, and put on the drop down room on it or I'll deploy the awning and put the drop down room out. Then if that's the case, I'll set this up because I've got um, a seat that I can put underneath it and it's like the perfect height to work at a desk. So that's in there. And then on this side, the only thing that I have left is I've got a tow chain and then I've got my Cabela's uh, cast iron. I've got a, a shallow dish, just as a 10 inch. Then I've got a deep dish here. And then if you put them on top of one another, you can make like a nice Dutch oven and then you know bake stuff when you're, when you're out camping. 
I love to bake pizzas in here, also cinnamon rolls. I'll do morning biscuits, like buttermilk biscuits. Uh, I've also done uh, cookies, like you can do like, chocolate chip cookies, stuff like that. So it's really useful. Once you start learning how to cook on one of these, man, it's great. So get them all nice and seasoned and the food comes out awesome. I'm gonna put this down here. And then uh, that's it for what I have underneath there and the, and the other items. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna adjust the camera position and we're gonna face down and I'm gonna pull out the, the bins that I have underneath here. One is just clothes, so I'm not really gonna go over that. It's just shorts and t-shirts for the summertime and socks. But the other one I want to go over because it has some gear in it that I use on a daily basis. But I just store everything and I keep everything real organized because if you don't, you spend all your time just shuffling around gear. So if you kind of designate a spot for certain items, which is what I recommend, you keep doing it over and over and over and it just becomes routine. So you know your items are always in a certain location. So let me change the camera angle and then we'll come back and I'll show you those items. All right, so uh, I've got a platform bed here. I, I store some bins underneath. One bin is for gear, the other one is for uh, clothing. So I'm gonna grab the gear bin and we're just gonna start going through the items. I've got it all organized the way that I usually set it up. And so this is how everything looks when I roll into camp. I'd, I would take these items out or, you know, uh, just move them to the side. That way I could access this gear bin. And it just slides right out. It's just your typical gear bins that you can buy at like um, you know Walmart or Target or whatever and so all the gear that I have in here I use all this stuff and I don't use it all on a daily basis but at least I use it at least once a week so we'll go through it here real quick and I'll, I'll show you everything that I have and then we'll be done with the video so um, I always keep up front as I keep a bag of bungee cords and my work gloves and my tarp especially this time of year because it's monsoon season in Colorado and so you can get uh, you know roll up to camp in the afternoon and it's just raining like crazy and it's like what do you do you know are you going to just sit in your truck all day and just sit there because that's pretty boring what I like to do is make a, a tarp shelter off the back of my truck I just attach it with some clips and I'll use this tarp along with the bungee cords to to, to tie it off either to trees or I can use like hiking poles in the back and put them through the grommets and create like a ridge line uh, to, to have a shelter over the back and then you're protected from the rain you can come back here cook dinner you know do whatever you need to do and you're not getting soaked so I uh, keep those those handy those are the first things that I put access when I get in here also I carry a a, a, a cone and this used to light up but somebody thought it'd be cute to run it over when I had it uh, one time when I was using it but I use this I do trail maintenance in the summertime in spring and fall and uh, Lots of times, you know, there's high traffic areas where we're at. There's a lot of backcountry traffic, and so I'll, I'll put this out. That way it just notifies people that there's a, somebody working in the area. And then uh, this time of year also the mosquitoes are real bad. This is the Sea to Summit uh, Mosquito Pyramid Net. This is a double, so it's, uh, it's pretty good sized. What I do is I'll set this up, and you can see how it kind of looks like this when you set up. This is basically a pyramid that comes down and protects you from mosquitoes. But I'll put that over the back. I'm starting to get some wind here, so hopefully the audio quality is okay. I'll put it over the back of my topper, and that way I can you know, open the back gate and not get swarmed with mosquitoes. So you just kind of tuck it in around and, and, and put it in the back there. But this is great to use. I, I definitely recommend a mosquito net if you're going to hit the road full time. And if you plan to spend any time in high alpine areas, you know, you're going to have mosquitoes if you're around water. So that's just kind of a rule of thumb. So that's, that's good to carry. Uh, let's see here. What do I want to go through next? Let's go through this. This is called the scrubber bag, and it's a scrubber wash bag, and this is what I do my laundry with. And so it has a little uh, little little legend over here that says, "Okay, if you're gonna do one one shirt, one pair of underwear, you know, two pairs of socks, then here's how much water you need to use. If you double that, well, then it's water up here, and then it has the instructions on how you're supposed to go ahead and use this thing. I, I love this. It's awesome. It's small. It has a flexible washboard in it. And it's surprising how clean it gets the clothes. I mean, it gets the clothes super clean. So, uh, recommend picking that up. Scrubba, S-C-R-U-B-B-A. That's the name of it. And it's great for either at camp or for backpacking because it, I mean, it folds down to this. It weighs nothing and it's uh, really useful. So, okay, moving right along, we've got my cooking stuff. So I've got a, a uh, little lightweight cutting board that I use. 
And then as far as my cook set, this, <laughs> this cook set has been around a while. This is the old MSR logo. Uh, it's the old Alpine Deluxe cook set. I got this when I was in Boy Scouts when I was a kid. So let me show this to you. It's a little beat up, but it's, uh, it still works well. So here's the cook set. It comes like this. It's, it's definitely a little bit heavy, but that's okay. I'm a nostalgic kind of guy, so I like this. And it has the skillet in it, and then a couple cups, and then a deep pan, and I put some other silver runner. I just kind of bend it and put it around there. But I love using this. It's got the old logo. I don't know if you can see this. I don't know if the zoom will work, but the old logo's on it and <laughs> imprinted on the back. So, but it works great. I mean, this stuff is bulletproof. I've had it since I was a teenager, or not even a teenager, it was before that. So that works well. And then uh, for the plate that I carry, this is actually my, my grandpa on my mom's side of family. This was his plate when he was a boy. And uh, he had this plate up until, I think he used it until he was about 18 or 19. But this was the plate that he had. And he was from Oklahoma. And total self-made guy. He went through the Great Depression and everything. But it's cool because I can see where the where he put his forks and stuff over the years because it really wore this down. But I, I use this every day for my, my cooking or for my eating uh, plate. I, I just love it. So um, so that's the MSR cook set that I have. And the stove that I use, if I'm just at camp and just like, you know, not, not backpacking, but I can actually stay at camp, I'll use a propane burning stove, like a, a single burner like this. I used to have a, I used to have a double burner stove and I, I got rid of that just because they're real big and bulky and I just found that I wasn't doing too many meals that needed two burners. So I just use this single burner. You just plug this in here and screw it in like that. And it works great for what I have and for, for my cooking needs. So it's nice, it's compact, it's cheap, and it works great. These canisters, I usually go through one one-pound canister in a week, and I cook on it every day. So it doesn't use very much fuel, which is nice. Um, with, that, with that cook set, there's also this great kettle. And um, I've used this just a ton. This is what I use for my morning coffee. So I'll put the water in here, heat it up, and get it to a boil, and then use that. So that's one of my most favorite pieces that I use. And then I also carry a Yeti. This is a tumbler. I think this is the, the 10 ounce size. I think that's what it is. 10 or 12 ounce, whatever. But this keeps coffee like super warm in the morning. So I'll, I'll have this and then I'll put like a single walled tin cup over it. And then the coffee will stay super warm in there. So this is a nice insulated cup to have. And I recommend it. Um, another canister of bear spray. Like I said, I have them all over the place. Uh, I carry some extra stakes, some tent stakes, in case I need to use those for securing a tarp with guy lines to the ground or, you know, if I want to pitch that tent and use it as a storage place to put other gear or whatever it may be. So I use that. Uh, I've got 50 feet of 550 paracord. This stuff's awesome. Super useful for a number of different applications. I recommend paracord. Uh, this is the hatchet I was telling you about, the East Wing, the 14-inch hatchet uh it's really a great hatchet i mean i've got no complaints with it whatsoever uh, it's a little wet so it's a little tight um it works great it's uh, i need i need to clean it a little bit but now you know i just primarily use it for a hammer so like i was saying i i i've got my outdoorsman axe that i use for pretty much all of my cutting so i just don't use this as much as i used to and then um let's see right here this is a i didn't realize that was broken no nope, looks like i'll be getting a new bin soon uh, this is a little mat for if you take a shower outdoors or whatever and you want a place to stand. This is a nice rubber mat to stand on. So I'll, I'll put this when I'm using the road shower for, um, you know, taking a shower outdoors. I'll put this down and that way it keeps your feet clean and you don't get them all muddy and then have to clean them off just to put your shoes on or whatever. So this helps out. Uh, another thing that's nice is I've got this little mat. This is a, a mat that I put down here underneath the tailgate like when I'm when I'm camping and I want to have a place to stand, but I don't want to uh, put down the rubber one. I want something that's a little bit wider. You put this down on the ground, you stake it down on both sides, and you got yourself like a little mat um, on the ground, which is, I find that to be real nice to use. All right, then I've got my tools. I've got a Master Mechanics socket set, which is great. That pretty much accommodates most of the stuff on my truck. And then I've got some additional like screws, and then I've got like a, a key here for, I don't even know what that goes to, but anyway, I got some other stuff like Allen wrenches, things like that. So that's there. And as far as tools go to round that out, I've got a hacksaw as well. So that's nice to have. 
And then for my, my uh, hammock setup, here's what I use. I've got a Sea to Summit AeroPress pillow. This is a large one. It's real nice and comfortable. And I'll use that with my Eno double nest hammock and use the, the Grand Trunk uh, straps that make for really, you know, you can really set up your tarp or your, I'm sorry, your hammock in a number of different scenarios with these because they're really great to use. So if we're going to get a, a hammock, I remember, I, I, I definitely recommend getting straps. So that's my hammock setup. And then uh, getting close to the end here, I've got my Yuko 3 candle candelier. Now this thing's freaking awesome in the spring and fall because it kicks out so much heat I put that right in here when I'm truck camping, and I'll leave the window cracked a little bit, and it, it just makes the, the, the top of the, or the interior of the top are really comfortable. So it's, the livability makes it great. The other thing that's nice too is if you have all three candles going, this metal plate on the top will actually get warm enough to where if you put a single wall cup on there, it can boil water after about 30 minutes. It can take really cold water and boil it. So um, in the spring and fall, if I'm having like tea or whatever at, by a campfire, I'll put my cup of tea on top of here and I'll keep it nice and warm and kind of like, you know, just keep it going. And that way it doesn't get all cool when you're out camping. So that's nice and it also kicks out a ton of light, so that's cool. And the last thing I've got here, uh, this is my MSR Guardian water purifier. It's a high volume water purifier. It uses a handle pump and really jams to the water. So you just take this little thing, throw it in the water and then start, start pumping and you're good to go. So you can do about six gallons of water in about 20 minutes, is what I found. So we've got some Jeeps going by. There's a, the All for Fun rally is going on right now here in Leadville area, I'm up in Half Moon Creek. So anyway, that's my uh, that's that's all my gear. That's that's what I use. Um, people, like I said, they've had a lot of questions about what I carry. So this is what I carry. Everything has a purpose, and uh, I try to maximize uh, using using all the space that I have because when you have limited space like this. Now, I essentially live in 25 square feet. That's what this is. But if you are creative and you think about, you know, the best way to pack things in here, it's kind of like Tetris. You know, you put them in here and make things fit the right way. Then it's really not an issue. And it's, you can get to the point where it's really comfortable. So, uh, you know, you just do a little bit of thinking outside the box and organize your gear accordingly and you can make everything pretty, pretty nice. So uh, that's the setup and that's all the gear that I carry here back here. So um, there is just one additional piece of gear that I carry up front, and that's my backpack. I've got a 70, uh, it's a, let's see, it's an Osprey 70 backpack, so it's pretty big. But I, that's just in the back seat up front. But other than that, this is all my gear. So uh, if you guys have any questions or anything, just hit me up in the comments below. And uh, thanks for watching. All right, bye.